How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC and uh, back with another video. I know it's been a little bit again. Uh, I've been posting some stuff on my Instagram about uh, why I haven't been making as many videos and been doing some testing, busy with all that other stuff, but just wanted to come on here real quick and throw up, this is going to be kind of a casual video. This isn't going to be a review of anything necessarily, uh, more of an overview of a brand and then just kind of a laid back conversation of why I've gotten into traditional knives, case knives specifically. But if you didn't see the title of the video, this is going to be about case knives, uh, the traditionals in general. They they do make some more modern uh, folders and stuff like that now. Um, but this is going to be about all of Case's traditional knives, my experience with them, kind of how I got into them, why I like them, and uh, the kind of the use that I've been put be, putting behind them so far. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull all these out of the slips here, which um, I'm, I should mention the slips here. These are all, except for this one here, these are all hitch and timber slips that are meant for a Victorinox Cadet. Uh, they make them for the Cadet, the Pioneer, and the Farmer, I believe, so three different sizes. Um, these fit a lot of your smaller uh, case models really, really well. Um, and I'm going to shout her out in a couple <laughs> a couple different times in this video because she's uh, influenced me quite a bit in my, terms of my my journey into traditional knives. But uh, Erica's EDC uh, used to be known as Not Not Your Average EDC on Instagram and on YouTube. She put me onto these. Uh, they're really great uh, great slips. Great slips. Wow, I can't speak. They're really great slips for uh, your case knives, the smaller ones, and then the larger size will fit some of your larger cases as well. So I'm gonna pull all these out so we can see the different models here. Also, the beads that are on here are Ultim uh, Mini Stallion beads from Urban Carvers. Really cool little beads as well. You guys know I've been into my uh, into my Ultim recently. So I'm gonna pull all these out and we kind of go through these here. So I'm gonna go biggest to smallest just because I have most of the I mostly have the the smaller ones. But this is the lar case large trapper. Uh, all of these are going to be in their uh, true sharp stainless. Um, none of these are going to be the CV, the creme vanadium, carbon steel, um, but these are all in stainless. So this is the large trapper. This is a mini copper lock. This is the Sodbuster Junior. This is a medium stockman. And then this is the small trapper. So both of these here are in red jigged bone. Uh, this is, uh, I forget what they call this um, here. This is a, a jig bone as well. This is some other kind of jig bone. Again, I'm still getting into this stuff, guys, so I don't know all of the names for everything in their lineup. And then this is a yellow synthetic, which to me looks a lot like the yellow Delrin that a lot of others use. So I'm just going to call it Delrin in this video. I could be wrong. It's some kind of synthetic, but this is in yellow synthetic. Uh, most of these, other than the Soundbuster Jr., have nickel silver bolsters. And these are all slip joints, so you have your back spring here. This is the only one, uh, this um, uh, small trapper here is the only one with a half stop. Uh, the rest of them are just straight pulls all the way through, you can see there. Uh, they stopped doing the half stops a couple years back. Um, I think it's just kind of kind of streamline their uh, manufacturing process. Um, I definitely prefer half stops on slip joint knives. And case does the slip the uh, half stops very nicely, and I think they still do um, some half stops occasionally, um, but most of them nowadays you're going to see are going to just be a straight pull. They're not going to have a half stop, so that's something you're into. Just beware. Um, but so the reason I got into traditional knives now that we have all these out here for you kind of look at while I while I ramble, um, I was getting really fed up with the the monotony and the well not even the monotony but just like the oversaturation of the production folder world which is why i got into a lot of stuff like small batch uh custom fixed blades stuff like uh from bw nice and from sosby blades and from offensive industries and all that stuff um i was kind of searching for something that was a little bit out of the norm kind of get away from that uh, rat race of always needing the new steel and mechanism and knives being released uh, a dozen at a time where you're getting uh, Chinese companies flooding the markets with like 15 different models every time, every, like every quarter it really feels like. And then they'll come out with 30 different versions of it in different scales and different steels. And it was just, there was, it was so oversaturated. There were so many, and they all look the same. Like 
Here is one that I happen to actually really like. Like, this is the Civivi. I don't even remember what it is. It's a Ray Laconica, but like stuff like Civivi and Kaiser and Best Tech and Concept and Rhea and all of those companies. And they, they all do really nice work. Like, the, all the knives are really nice, but they all felt the same. They all kind of functioned the exact same. Uh, there were so many people doing OEM work. So, like, uh, American companies uh, that are getting their stuff uh, OEM'd from Riot or Best Tech or whoever, and then they're per and then they're selling them under a different name. Um, now, it's nothing wrong with that. They're being honest about who the OEMs are, but the problem is, it's like you're seeing all these cool new companies pop up, and then it's like, oh, it's 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 made by Kaiser or it's made by Concept or whatever. And it's like you know exactly how these knives are going to feel and perform, which could be a good thing for some for some people. Um, like if you're just looking to get a, a knife that's going to work really well and you know how it's going to perform already because all of those Chinese knives kind of the form and function is all exactly the same. They all feel the exact same. So if you're just an end user looking for a knife and you want to know, you know that these those certain knives perform well, yeah, that might be a good thing for you. But the people buying those really aren't using them all that much. And it just became a like mass collection of got to get the 15 new Kaisers that came out this quarter and then and then advert all the YouTube channels are pushing them every time they get new scale material and new steel. And it's like, this is, this is too much. So I went into kind of the fixed blade world, um, kind of found my home there. And I was really into that for a while. And I wanted to get back into folders because again, with fixed blades, there's really only so much you can do. There's no moving parts involved. So like the mechanical interests that I have, like I'm a machinist, I work in manufacturing, so um, I kind of like all the intricacies and seeing the machine work and seeing the engineering that goes behind them. So I wanted to get back into folders, but then again, you know, get back into the folding knife world, and it's just so oversaturated. So that's how I landed on traditional knives with, again, a lot of help from uh, Erica's EDC. Erica does some really great videos on traditional. She's very knowledgeable um, about sharpening and maintaining your knives and all that stuff. Definitely go check her channel out. But I started watching her videos, and I was like, all right. Never really had an interest in like actual old school traditional knives before. Uh, let's give it a try. I mean, it can't hurt, right? And the nice thing about case knives especially is they're not that expensive. Uh, pretty much all of their models other than like the exclusive runs they do um, are under a hundred bucks. Most of them are like the 50 to 70 or $80 range. Um, so it's a pretty affordable new hobby to get into, uh, if you're going to go with case. Now there is stuff like GEC, Grand Eastern Cutlery, um, and then a lot of like custom makers and stuff like that. And the prices go way up from there. Um, but case are a really good entry level, uh, knife. And I, to be honest with you, I've had some GECs. I actually do. I own two GECs right now and I've handled a bunch of other ones. Um, I like case better overall. And again, this could kind of be like home team uh, advantage here. The uh, the case stuff is made in Pennsylvania. I think you guys know I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, so kind of rooting for the home team. That's really cool. Um, and they're, they're really, they're actually not that far away from me. I forget where GECs are made. I think they actually might be made in PA as well. You guys can correct me on that. But case is very local to me. Um, so again, cool to support people that are not that far from me. Um, they're owned by Zippo now as well, or I don't know if Case owns Zippo or Zippo owns Case, but um, they're owned by the same company now, so that factory uh, is not that far from me, which is really cool. Um, but there's just something nice <laughs> about uh, having traditionals and collecting them and using them. It's just so it's simple. Um, there's not the, there's not the hype around them that the modern folding world, the folding knife world. Uh, an industry has like, yeah, they do exclusive runs of like uh, another, a model with like a different cover, uh, with different covers, which I learned these are not scales on traditional Nazicom covers, the more, you know, um, so yeah, the, like case and GEC will do exclusive runs with like a different uh, cover, different colors, that kind of thing. But the steels are pretty much all the same, uh, case uses uh, either uh, they call it true sharp which is basically 420 hc or they use chrome vanadium which is like a uh, an alloy that's very similar to some carbon steels uh, like 1095 uh, gec exclusively uses 1095 um, and most of your custom makers are doing that kind of stuff as well, unless they're getting kind of like the modern traditional world, world where they're using more modern super steels. Most of them are using old, older school stuff like 1095. 
I've seen some D2s, some 154CM, that kind of stuff. So very basic steels. Um, and that kind of gets into what I like about them is what I found, what I found for myself and my EDC. So I'll pull out the other knives that I'm carrying here today. So right now I'm carrying the uh, Tor Knives Merchant and the uh, Sosby Cub. Um, and again, the, uh, the Tor isn't a great example of this, but a lot of the knives I carry, I usually tend to prefer softer steels that are easier to maintain. Um, I really enjoy Nitro V, uh, 154CM, uh, VG10, AEBL, ADCRV2, uh, all of those kind of steels. Um, they're just easier to maintain. Uh, your modern, uh, like, uh, super steel, modern stainless super steels, like N390, 20CV, Magna Cut, um, all of those, it's, it's kind of a pain, like, they, yeah, they are gonna hold an edge forever, but then when you finally get them to the point where you have to sharpen them, it's really a pain in the ass, um, and I just like maintaining my knives on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So I will very often, if I use my knife a lot that day, um, I will uh, come home at night and I'll strap it up. Um, especially with these, I might drop some uh, oil in the pivot if they get uh, gritty at all. Um, I just kind of enjoy that kind of maintenance that comes with older school stuff and softer steels. Very easy to maintain, a very sharp edge uh, with just a strop or like a ceramic stone. Uh, you don't have to... Uh, get like a, a Wicked Edge or a KME or a Work Sharp to be able to maintain those really high-end steels. Now, that's, those are good skills to know. Um, and good, it's it's fine if you're more into the, the, the super steels. But I really like, for me, what I do, um, I prefer to have a softer steel that I can beat on a little bit uh, for like my fixed blades uh, because they're going to kind of roll instead of chip. And that's a lot easier to correct the edge. Um, and with the, the softer steels, it's like you, you come home, you strap it up a little bit, uh, either daily or weekly or whatever, however your process is, and you're good again. Like it, you don't need, I feel like a lot of people who don't know how to sharpen and don't know how to maintain their knives think that like, once my knife goes dull, I either have to buy a $500 sharpener or send it off to get sharpened. And that's my only option. And a lot of people don't want to learn how to do that. Um, so they just send it off and it's like, you can have a steel like something like this where it's like the 420 equivalent or like a 1095. And it's going to do everything you need for your day of work or your day, whatever you're doing with your knives. Like unless you are like, I don't know, unless you literally your job is to sit and break down cardboard for eight hours a day, you're really not going to need anything more than something like your 420s, your VG10s, your 154s, your 1095s. Those will get you through your day, and then you come home and you spend five minutes strapping your knife up, and you're back to a perfectly working edge again. Um, so I like that about them. They're very easy to maintain. There's also just, I don't know, there's something about uh, the traditionals that I like. I enjoy feeling the walk and talk. I, f I enjoy the deliberate, like if I have a slip down in my pocket, I enjoy pulling it out, take it out of the slip, two hand open, use it, put it back, put it back in my pocket. That used to bother me. Um... It doesn't really anymore. And again, I I never carry just this knife. I pretty much always have a fixed blade as well. And some days if I'm reviewing, I'll have like another um, like a modern folder as well. So if I really need something like right now, like I need to make a cut quickly, like I, my, my hand is full of something else and I need to make a cut or I need to do it in a hurry because I'm doing something at work, like I have another option for that. But I enjoy when I have the time where I can say, oh, I need a knife or something. Pull this out, take out my traditional, use it, put it back in its slip. Um, I, I really don't mind that. It used to bother me that they weren't one hand opening. Uh, it, it just really doesn't anymore. And I think as you use them, you start to realize that a lot of that that has been parroted around the knife community of this kind of stuff being outdated really just isn't true. And if you use them and you get to know how they work, they will treat you just as well as any kind of modern folder with a super steel and a, and a lock and one hand opening and all that stuff. You can do pretty much everything that knife can with these. Uh, I mean, even like your Sodbuster model, like these were the work knife for a long time. Um, a lot of people did a lot of hard use stuff with, with knives like this. Um, for a long time. So it's not that they can't do it. Another thing a lot of people don't like often is having a non-locking knife. Now, this is a back lock here. The mini copper lock is a back lock. Um, but uh, most of your traditionals are going to be slip joints. I was really worried getting into these and starting to use them, whoops, uh, that I was going to uh, 
run into the lo the locks, the back brake disengaging on me and closing on me, um, or like being annoyed that the that it was kind of sliding around on me or anything like that. Um, but I have really not experienced that. The only time I have had um, a slip joint uh, disengage and cut me um, was, it was a lion steel I had, which was like a modern traditional. And it was my own stupid fault that I was kind of holding it like this and I pushed it closed. I was kind of messing with the back spring tension and I pushed it too far and it pushed down and cut my finger. That was my fault. That was not the nice fault. In actual use, I have never experienced one of these like like feeling it start to close and being annoyed that I had changed my grip or having it close while I'm using it. I've never had it happen. And I've been carrying these for months now. And I know a lot of people uh, that have been carrying these a lot longer than I have and don't have that issue. So again, most things that are knife doing, you're pushing away from you. Um, so the tension of the cut is keeping that open. Um, I, I don't really see any kind of situations unless you're doing some stupid tactical stuff with a slip joint like a dumbass where these are going to close on you in normal everyday use. Uh, these are these are work knives. These are EDC knives. Uh, they're not meant to stab through a car door like that, like early 2000s to 2010s cold steel marketing would tell you knives have to be like ZT and the cold steel, I think, did such a disservice to uh, marketing knives like that. But um, yeah, it's just. I don't know. There's something about these that's just, it's, they're fun to use. Um, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy the pin construction and the older materials and the walk and talk. It's just, I don't know. There's something about it that's enjoyable to me. And I even like case a lot better than a lot, a lot of the GECs and stuff as well, because I like like the stamped markings on the tang here. Those were all stamped in stuff like that. I like the high polish on the blades all that good stuff, the brass liners that they always use. Um, the, this, the aesthetic of case knives is kind of my favorite out of all the traditionals I've seen. GEC is here, and I'll pull one here for you. Uh, this is my Farm and Field calf pen. You can see GEC, uh, I mean, they, some of it is, I can't tell if it's stamped or engraved, but like, and then they have like uh, etching on the blade like that, stuff like that. Um, and GECs are great, don't get me wrong. They're fantastic knives. Uh, but I just love the aesthetic that Case Knives has. And again, I admit I'm probably a little biased rooting for the home team here because they're local to me. Um, but yeah, they're great. And again, if you're getting into this as like a new part of the hobby where you're like kind of like moving away from that modern knife world into the traditional world, Case is such a good place to start because they are so cheap where you can get three or four case knives to try whereas for the price of one modern folder uh, you could buy four of these for probably under two hundred dollars whereas a, a, like a really nice modern knife you're gonna pay two three hundred dollars for probably if it's like a Riat or even like an American made one like the Tor or something like that or god forbid a Sebenza you're paying five six hundred dollars for one knife uh, these are very nicely made knives for a budget price. Now, that being said, there are some issues that they have every once in a while um, because they are very much made in traditional ways in a very traditional setting in their factory. Um, you do run into a, a couple quality control issues. You'll occasionally get some gapping here in the back spring uh, between the back spring and the liners and the covers. This one doesn't really have any. Let me see if I can find one that does. So here you can see on the Sodbuster Jr., there's a little bit of gapping there. Now, again, I'm fully admitting here that I am new to this whole scene, so I don't know everything. I don't really see a functional reason why that's a bad thing other than aesthetics or if it was like really bad and gaping where something was out of alignment and then something's rubbing or if it's really open, you're going to get grit down in there. Uh, but like even just this where like GECs, you never see gapping like it is. They're perfect every time case. There's a little more variation. So occasionally you'll get some gapping like that. Let's see if I can find another one that has it. I think a lot of mine are pretty solid, honestly. I honestly don't remember if any of mine really have. There's a little bit maybe over here on this side, but again, usually they're pretty solid. Um, you will also occasionally see where the uh, the, the um, spine and the back lock aren't perfectly flush, which again, 
as long as they're locking up solid is really not a big deal to me at least here you can see again it's a little bit raised usually when the slip joint mechanism is fully open and fully closed you want to kind of see that flush now on a lot of mine on the close they are flush i'm just feeling them all real quick again this was a kind of an impromptu video yeah pretty much all of mine are flush on the close as well okay the cop mini copper lock is ever so slightly raised there you see that, how it's just ever so slightly raised above the bolster. So that would be considered a quality control thing for a lot of people. Again, doesn't really bother me. Like a lot of things on the modern world, like lock stick and stuff like that, doesn't really bother me. Uh, but technically, there are some issues that can arise with these. Now, the one uh, issue that I will say that these often have that is um, annoying to me is that the way that they sharpen these at the factory uh, is they sharpen them on a wheel and they do one pass for the one bevel and they do one pass for the other bevel and then they and then they go so they usually have a pretty uh good angle on the on the edge but there's often a very noticeable wire burr left on the edge from that wheel that you will have to when you get like immediately when you get a case knife take it out of the box feel if that burrs there which it probably will be run it a couple times on a ceramic stone hit it on the strop it'll be fine uh the so that is something to look out for that often the edge will have a very large burr on it that you will have to take off it takes about five minutes it's not a big deal um, now again you might be saying andrew you've done reviews where you've really let companies uh, you've really torn companies a new one over their edges being bad. Yeah, I did, um, and I will always be out there and say it. The Tactile Knife Co. Uh, Bear, as well as some other other knives, I really set, I really let them have it about the edge and stuff like that. The difference is there; they're using a much higher end steel in a modern uh, production environment. And there's not really an excuse for that, in my opinion. These, I understand they're manufacturing these in a very traditional way at a much lower cost, and they're doing that kind of sharpening system to keep costs down. Again, it's something that's easy to fix at home, whereas a completely wrong angled uh, edge bevel on a magna cut blade that's been properly heat treated is really a bitch for someone like me to fix. So little different wheelhouse here. Would I appreciate if Case stopped doing that? Yeah, that'd be great if I knew I could just take these out of the box and use them right away. But usually most knives you want to strap anyways. So anyways, I digress. That is something that can be an issue. Uh, the other thing you often want to do is if you look down in the pivots of a lot of these be, from that kind of polishing process of the bolsters, because all, all my knives I either got used or I've used enough that they're starting to get beat up. Um, but these bolsters come like a, with a very high polish on that, on that uh, nickel silver bolster. Um, so often you'll get some debris or grit down in the pivot from the polishing or from that sharpening. And really all you have to do is you can kind of blow it out a little bit. Um, but really, if you just kind of take whatever uh, pivot oil you enjoy and uh, just put a drop down in here and put a drop down in there and open and close the knife a couple times, that will work itself out. And in about... I don't know, 10 minutes of opening and closing your knife, you won't even really notice it anymore. So again, this goes back to this. These are not modern knives with modern problems. These are traditional knives with traditional problems. So the, time, the kind of environment of maintaining your knives translates a little bit into that first, that kind of primary care of what you do when you first get the knife to me. So that kind of like knocking the burr off, putting a little bit of uh, pivot oil in there and then being able to use it as is for however long this knife lasts then, uh, it's really not an issue to me. It, it doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, I understand that. And I'm not saying that's not a valid criticism. To me, it does not bother me at all. So I really enjoy using these. I really enjoy carrying them. Um, and again, there's a lot of great uh, makers out there doing slip joints. There's also a huge market for modifying knives, especially case knives. Um, just one I can think of off the top of my head is Box Creek Knife Company on Instagram. He does some really cool mods. There's a Sodbuster Jr. he did in like a Lager G10 where he added a half stop that I, I've almost bought several times. <laughs> I just don't have the money to do it right now. Um, but yeah, there, I've really been enjoying the traditional knife world. And it also seems the people that are into traditionals are just a lot more chill. Like uh, Erica has made videos about this as well. Just like a lot of them are older guys that grew up carrying these knives. Um, they have a lot of knowledge to offer and they're just kind of laid back. 
Uh, and even the people that are younger, like myself and Erica, that are collecting these, like, it just seems like there's less of a rat race to get the next best thing in that community, which is not the case in the modern folding knife world. And that was just really driving me up a wall. So just for an example here, I'm going to put some of these aside and just kind of show you how this would work in my carry normally. So say normally what I do is I pretty much always have a fixed blade, something like this, a smaller uh, uh, defensive fixed blade that I can use for a little bit of utility. And recently I have been getting back into like some USA made folders, um, especially from smaller companies. Uh, so I'll have something like this and then I'll carry, if I can find a slip for it, um, a traditional with it. So. Do I need three knives every day? Absolutely not. I could do with just this and be absolutely fine. Realistically, I'm probably never going to get into a knife fight. I like to have a defensive knife because it's a good idea, but realistically, I could probably get through my day with just that. Um, but again, I have a YouTube channel. I review knives, so I carry a lot of knives so I can use them so I can actually put out honest reviews that have use behind them. So this is what a, uh, a pretty typical carry looks like for me. What I do is I kind of slip this in the front of my uh, front right pocket, and then I'll have this sitting down in my pocket like this. Lanyards are dumb on most knives, but it is nice to have them on a slip to be able to pull it out of your pocket. And then I'll have this clip right next to that like that. So I kind of have all my knives lined up there. Um, if I just need something real quick and easy, I'll pull out my fixed blade and use it. If I have time where I can sit down and I can uh, kind of concentrate on what I'm doing, I'll often pull out the traditional to use it because I enjoy using traditionals probably more than any other kind of knife. In terms of actually using them, I enjoy using traditionals the most. It's a pleasurable experience for me. Don't read into that. <laughs> um, and then I have, if I really need to do like a lot of breaking down cardboard or something like that, I'll have a modern knife uh, that has pretty high edge retention on it. So if I need to put a lot of use on a blade, I have something like this to do it. But again, you probably could just carry this knife depending on what your job is. And it would probably get you through just fine. But in terms of my carry, uh, this is kind of how I've been doing it. Um, and I've been getting a lot of enjoyment and use out of this. Uh, the one other thing I will say then is um, in terms of moving forward with these, I would really like, and I don't know if I told you this before, but this is like a PVD coated blade, which is, I don't know how well it's showing up. It might just look kind of like a satin with a shadow on it, but that's actually a black PVD coated blade, which you never see with case. I had no idea how rare this knife was when I bought it off of eBay, uh, but so many people have tried to buy it off of me since I got it. Um, but I will probably uh, be kind of transitioning my, case uh, collection over to the CV steel, um, which uh, if you're not familiar, CV stands for chrome vanadium, which is an alloy uh, more similar to like a carbon steel. Um, and what another thing that a lot of people enjoy about traditional knives uh, is the patina that a blade develops. Patina is kind of like a surface, um, a surface reaction to oxidization and the material that's being cut with it. Um, so it's not rust necessarily. It actually forms a light layer on the top of the blade that actually in the long run protect it from actually rusting and pitting and eating away at the material. Um, let me see if I can grab something here as an example. Uh, here's a GEC. It's actually a fixed blade, uh, but this is in 1095 and you can see how that is developing that patina like that because I've used this knife in the kitchen quite a bit, so it's cut a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, acids tend to uh, formulate really nice patinas on carbon steels. So another thing that a lot of people like about uh, the trill traditional knife thing is watching the patina develop on the blade, and you don't get that with the stainless steel. Um, I just happen to get these because like, I bought this in person uh, at a store. This is my first case uh, at a local store out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, and, uh, this is just the model that spoke to me and they happened to have it in the true sharp stainless. So I got it. This one I got on eBay because the, the PVD blade was super cool. And I wanted a Sodbuster junior and just ha again, happened to be in stainless. And then, uh, this was a gift from someone, one of my viewers and uh, friends on Instagram, which was super cool. Again, happened to be in stainless. This was uh, one that I got from a friend on Instagram as well for a really good deal. Again, stainless. And then, <laughs> again, another one I got in a trade from someone on Instagram, uh, a buddy of mine. So, uh, and again, it just happened to be stainless. So I'd like to start getting uh, some more of the CV ones. They tend to be less common, it seems. I don't know if they're just more popular, so they sell out faster. But, like, on a lot of the retailer websites, you can really only find the True Sharp ones. 
um, of the, the stainless. And then like on the Ebays and Amazons, it seems like it's much more common for the, the stainless ones to be put up for sale. So I will probably try to transition some of these models. Like obviously the ones that were gifts or they're special to me. Uh, like the one that was a gift and the, the first one I got will probably stick around and this one because it's rare. But like the other ones, who knows, I might kind of get the same model in a CV so I can watch that patina develop because I enjoyed the, uh, creating a patina on my knives as I use them as well. So that was a lot of me talking, guys. Hopefully that wasn't boring to you. Hopefully some of this resonates with you. I know this kind of went from just a, me talking about case knives to kind of talking about the... Um, the virtues or lack thereof of the modern folding knife world and just kind of traditionals in general. But I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of thing. I will probably review some of these down the line. Um, again, since I fully admit that I am not the most knowledgeable on traditionals, especially case yet, um, I don't want to put out reviews without knowing enough to feel like I'm giving you guys information that you couldn't get from someone else. Um, so I will probably do reviews on some of these down the line. Let me know what your thoughts are on my opinions on this kind of stuff. Do you hate traditionals? Do you like them? Do you kind of see the merit in what I'm talking about? Would you like to see reviews about these? Uh, just let me know down in the comment section. Let me know what traditionals you guys enjoy. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.